I want to show you a quick demonstration of how we can use the new resource constraints on Snowpark optimized warehouses to use packages and libraries that have x86 or compiled code, native code dependencies. So I'm in a Snowflake notebook here, and I want to use the particular package TensorFlow Decision Trees, which if I go to the package picker in my notebook, I'm going to go ahead and search for it. And we don't have the Decision Trees TensorFlow uh, library available in Anaconda. Um, but what I have done is I've downloaded the source wheel file for the TensorFlow Decision Forest package. I've downloaded that from PyPy and I've uploaded it to uh, Snowflake Stage and added it as a stage package import. Um, now, the other thing I want to show you is I have two different Snowpark optimized warehouses is created. The first one is just a test warehouse where you'll notice I'm just specifying the memory 16x constraint. So this is a 256 gigabyte RAM node. Uh, and then I've also created an x86 specific Snowpark optimized warehouse. So I have SO warehouse x86 where you can see the resource constraint has the memory 16x, so it's 256 gig again, but it also has an x86 architecture dependency. And that's because I need that x86, x86 architecture because that's what the wheel file from uh, the TensorFlow Decision Forest PyPy page is built for. So first I'm gonna show you what happens when I try to run on the test warehouse that does not have the x86 architecture. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is unzip my stage file for the library itself. And I'm just gonna to try to import it. And we're gonna see, this is gonna fail. And the reason it fails is because there are shared object files as part of this library that only the x86 architecture is really equipped to handle. Uh, and so that normal warehouse that I created isn't gonna be able to run this. So what I'm gonna do next though, is just switch from the normal warehouse to the x86 specific one. I go ahead and save that setting. And it's just gonna restart my kernel real fast. So while this restarts, get my session going here. Now I'm gonna unzip that uh, stage file again and run that import statement one more time. And you'll see it succeeds. Now I can use libraries like Snowpark Pandas to read in some sample data set. This is a fun one where we've got information about penguins uh, and then we're just trying to you know, train a model that classifies the species of the penguin. Do some data pre-processing and ultimately train a TensorFlow Decision Forest random forest model uh, on that input data set. And you'll see that pre those pre-processing steps are just running up above. We're gonna encode our categorical species variables we're going to split up our data set into train and test and then run our model training. And you'll see it runs no problem. We can start to use that TFDF package, which again is not available in our Anaconda package because there's only x86 builds for it. But using now both Snowflake notebooks with stage package imports, uh, which allows me to upload these custom packages that aren't supported, and specifically running it on a Snowpark optimized warehouse that's pinned to the x86 architecture, allows me to run and use this library with no problems, because I now I'm running on a uh, warehouse that has the right guaranteed architecture. So this resource constraint option is really cool when you have custom packages or third-party packages that are only compiled for x86, or maybe even packages that are optimized for x86 in the background. Some packages like NumPy and SciPy and others actually run more efficiently in the background. And so you can take advantage of all of those new capabilities by using the new resource constraint keyword argument on Snowpark optimized warehouses.